A quick note before we begin, this episode is brought to you by Audible. Get a free audiobook download and a 30-day free trial at theauthorinsideyou.com slash free book. Choose from over 180,000 titles. Go to theauthorinsideyou.com slash free book. You're listening to the Author Inside You podcast, a weekly podcast designed to motivate you to finish writing a book, choose a publisher, and build an audience. Keep listening if you're looking to get propelled into the next chapter of your life. And now, it's the Author Inside You podcast. Hello, and welcome to the Author Inside You podcast. I'm Matt Rafferty. And I'm Leah Rafferty. Joining us today is Dave Jackson, author of Profit From Your Podcast, Proven Strategies to Turn Listeners into a Livelihood. Dave is the host of numerous podcasts, and he's best known for the School of Podcasting, which he's been hosting for 15 years. Welcome, Dave. Thanks for joining us today. Oh, guys, thanks for having me. Looking forward to uh, to having a fun chat. We are too. Okay, so Dave, there's a wealth of information in your book. Can you tell us about your research process? Yeah, I, I actually kind of lucked out. I had uh, previously written a book that was self-published called More Podcast Money. And in the process of I don't know, just time, people kept saying, hey, I, I bought your book, but it doesn't mention anything about crowdfunding. And I'm like, because when I wrote it, it, it didn't exist. Mm. And the advantage I, I had is I just reached out to my audience and I said, hey, I'm going to rewrite this book. And if you're making a dime with your podcast, I really would like to talk to you. And didn't expect anybody to kind of reach back out. And instead, it was the direct opposite. I had people like, oh, I would love to talk to you. And I consequently, <laughs> and, yeah. And so, and everybody had these great stories and insights. And that's really what I wanted it to be was every book I've ever read on making money with your podcast is 90% how to start a podcast and 10% you can make money with affiliate marketing. And I was like, I, I wanted more strategies and insights and real life stuff. And so it took me quite a few months to to do a lot of interviews. And at the time I was, this was pre-COVID, I was going around at different events and I would set up uh, meetings with people to where we could go out to dinner or lunch or something like that and uh, talk that way. So it was super casual and I just took a lot of notes and and things of that nature. And the beauty of it is after I started writing it is when I got contacted by a publisher. And I still don't exactly know besides just they heard my podcast and they were just like, hey, we see you're kind of a, you know, you have a presence in the the podcasting space. We're looking to have someone write a book about monetizing a podcast. And I was like, geez. <laughs> so they literally reached out to you. Yeah. Wow. That is, and that's practically unheard of, isn't it? It is. And I was like, well, it's funny you should mention that. I'm about, you know, a month and a half into research and rewriting. And I was going to rewrite the original book and and just kind of update it with new stuff. And about, I would say, four days into that of just searching through, because some of the examples from the original book, you know, that was from years ago. And those people weren't podcasting anymore for whatever reason they had quit and things like that. And anytime you deal with technology, you know that half the book is going to be outdated. And I just <laughs> right. went, I was like, you know what? I think I'm going to have less headaches if I just start from scratch. So I did what probably every author does. I, I sat down and kind of was like, okay, here's the focus of the book. It's going to be strategies and insights. And then it was just a matter of writing down what would be the chapters and then what are the subheadings? And you just kind of keep expanding, expanding, expanding. And uh, eventually you end up with a book. Well, can we go back a little bit to the research? So when you sat down with people at restaurants or when you saw them at events, did you record their interview and go back and transcribe it? Or was it all note taking? If it was, uh, you know, in person, I would, in some cases, it was kind of impromptu. I'd see somebody and they're like, hey, are you still looking for interviews for your book? And I was like, yeah. And we would just go in a room and I would just throw my my phone down and hit record. So it wasn't something that was ever meant to be put out as a podcast. I just wanted something that I could listen to later. And yeah, in some cases I would then transcribe it. And many of them that weren't in, in person were done over Zoom or Skype or, you know, insert your, your tool of choice there. Uh, and that way I could go back and listen and kind of organize everything. But yeah, it was uh, just a lot of interviews. And then in some cases it was I, like, for example, with Pat Flynn and 
Jordan Harbinger and some of the guys get interviewed all the time. It was a matter of just listening to interviews that they'd done with other people and getting insights that way, which kind of cuts back on some of the time. If you don't have to do the interview, it's already been done. Well, you know, good content is good content. Sure. I don't care if it, <laughs> if I did it or not, I'll, I'll take it. Right. So. so did you reach out to them for permission? I did. I, uh, I, I know both Jordan and, and Pat and said, Hey, here's this and that. And actually Jordan gave me more information, which was great. Oh, that's nice. And, uh, and Pat's a super nice guy. And uh, the other research was I had people that were doing things that I'd, I'd never thought of. There's an example in the book of somebody that was looking to become a nonprofit. And apparently there is all sorts of hurdles that you have to, like you actually have to have a, like a, a board of um, trustees or something like that and all sorts of red tape. And he found out that you can actually take your podcast and kind of be go under an umbrella of an active nonprofit. And it's almost like it works a little bit like Patreon, like a crowdfunding thing where the people donate to the, the top nonprofit and then they take a small portion of that and then it goes to, to him. And I had never heard, I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah interesting. it's interesting. Yeah. It's always kind of amazing when I, if I go somewhere to speak and I always, there's the, the voice in my head that goes, well, nobody's going to respond to this. And I'll say, hey, I'm going to be in, you know, Havelock, North Carolina or some kind of weird city or weird meaning it's not a, you know, it's not Chicago, it's not New York. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, but I'm going to be there, you know, in two weeks. If, if anybody wants to get together and I don't know, go out to dinner or whatever, you know, I, I'd love to meet you. And I've done that a couple of times and never have I got crickets. I've always had somebody say, I can't believe you're coming and this is great. And <laughs> so that always amazes me. Well, that's what leads into your book also. A lot of people who are authors, they don't have followers. They don't have people who already know them, but you have a group of people. So tell us about how you feel that helped you with your book. One of those things with, with podcasting, you can, I always say if you can, Whatever, whatever point you're going to make, if you can kind of tell that point or make that point with a personal story, uh, that lets people know you a little bit. And if the point you make helps them, whether it be, you know, save some time or money or whatever, some way that they're going to benefit, then they're going to like you. They're like, wow, I, you know, she said that one thing and I tried it and it worked and it was awesome. So now they kind of know you, they like you. And if you can put out content on a regular basis, then you kind of seem trustworthy because gosh, they're, it just seems like they're there every Wednesday. There they are again, and it's great. Mm. So so now they know you, they like you, and they trust you. And so when you say, hey, I've got this new thing coming out, they just, oh, where do I sign up to? Yeah, I had somebody today, and I didn't even think about this. Somebody emailed me. They said, how do I get a signed copy? Oh, geez. And I was like, <laughs> uh, I don't know. I never thought about that. <laughs> so I, I guess I need to set up some sort of system. And that's that's another thing that I, I have found that there are people that start off a podcast thinking it's going to go in one direction. And then once they, you know, w through their content, they attract a certain type of audience. And sometimes it's the audience that will say, Hey, do you know anybody that does this? And in my case, when I first started off, uh, somebody said, do you know anybody who does the editing of a podcast? I just want to talk into a microphone. And I was like, uh, me, yes, I can do that. Mm. So it's it's one of those things where the a podcast can really just build your influence. And I know Scott Sigler is a guy, and this was you know decades ago, probably two thousand six ish. Try to get a book published, and all the publishers were like, "You can't do this because it was science fiction and horror." And they go, "Well, you, you can't." It's like peanut butter and chocolate. You can't put those two <laughs> things together. One or the other. Yeah. And so he created a podcast and basically kind of acted out his book to where people hmm. were just going bonkers. They're like, when's the next chapter coming? He's like, I'm writing it right now. <laughs> and so I, I don't know how much of it, but I know some of the story was affected from the audience saying, well, so-and-so going to do such and such and this character and, and, I'm not sure oh, if Scott was like, you know what? Well, they weren't, but they are now. That's a good <laughs> oh, idea. Yeah, that's wonderful. Changing mid-story. Yeah, and the great story about that was he ended up giving away his entire book on his podcast, which to me, that one I kind of go, mm, not sure if I'm ready to give the entire book that I just spent you know, months writing away. 
But he gave it away, and his audience was just like, that was the best thing ever. And he said, great. He goes, because I'm going to self-publish, and it's going to be, be available on this day on Amazon. If everybody could order on this day on Amazon, I would be greatly, you know, just it would be an honor if you could do that for me. If you've enjoyed the show, please do that. And they did, and he was number two on all of Amazon. So not like number wow. two in the, you know, this little cat. He was number two <laughs> of the whole thing. He would have been number one, except there was this other book that came out. You may have heard of it called Harry Potter. Oh, <laughs> wow. <yeah. laughs> but uh, that was another one that just showed how you build this influence and this uh, connection with your audience. And then when it comes time for them to order, they're like, oh, I want to support my friend. And off they That's go. Wonderful. Right. Yeah. So Dave, let's get back to talking about writing, writing your book. How did you go about organizing everything to make it come out into a logical format? Yeah, what I did was I kind of thought about it. And I was like, okay, how, how do you make money with a podcast? And it really kind of broke down to just a couple of different ways. There are things like, obviously, you can sell your stuff. Then there was affiliate marketing, which is selling other people's stuff. Then you get into sponsors. And then there are things like crowdfunding. You know, so they all kind of, there's only certain ways that you can have different income streams. And so after doing the different interviews, it was a matter of, okay, like I spent a lot of time talking with Jonathan Oaks. He does a, a show called Trivial Warfare, who was just crushing it on crowdfunding. So I realized that Jonathan was going to be a huge part of that particular chapter. But I also, over the years, have uh, talked with a guy named Glenn Hebert, and he does the um, the Horse Radio Network. Well, Glenn kind of does everything. He's really big on sponsors, but he also does crowdfunding. So it was a matter of going back to the interviews and kind of just catalog them as, okay, this is an example of affiliate marketing. This is an example of uh, creating a product based on your audience. And I just kind of lined them up in piles. And then when it came time to write the book, it was like, okay, now we're going to talk about affiliate marketing. Okay. Who do we have? Okay. We have some stuff from Pat Flynn. We have some stuff from me. We have some stuff like that. And then it was just a matter of organizing it into that topic and then just making sure that when it was done, everybody I had interviewed was in the book. I did, wow, I did, that's great. Because I, I, that was my biggest worry. I was like, I don't want to get done and go. Uh, Darren Dake is a great example. He's a guy that started a podcast. He's a coroner, and he just wanted to talk oh. to, to other coroners because, as you might imagine, not the average person wants to, hey, let's let's go out to uh, yeah. uh, and, and talk about dead people, you know, and, and crime scenes and things like that. And he just wanted to talk to other coroners, and that led to speaking gigs and he actually now has an online school and is making a large amount of money. Uh, and it all started just because he wanted to talk to other corners. So, wow, who would have thought? But that's yeah. how I kind of just organized it all down. And again, I wanted it to not just be, you can make money with affiliate marketing or you can make money with sponsors. It was like, here are people that are doing it. In some cases, if they would let me, here's how much they made and here's how they went about doing it. I really wanted it to be not just fluff. I wanted it to be something that actually proved that, yeah, this is really happening and yeah, you can do this. Right. I'm in the middle of reading the book and I do enjoy how that there are actual real cases that you're, you're referencing. Yeah. I, uh, for years I kept reading books on storytelling cause I'm a podcaster and every book it seemed I picked up, it was like, storytelling is good. Storytelling <laughs> can be very helpful. And I was like, yeah, and I, I finally found a book called Story Worthy, where the guy was actually telling you strategies on how to shape a story. And that kind of was how I wanted this to be. Not just like, hey, making money is fun. It was like, here's how these people are actually doing it. And the, the first part of the book even explains that if you're looking to make money quickly, like, hey, I want to read this book and quit my day job in six weeks, just put the book down because that's not the way it works. You have to have great content and it you have to promote it and things of that nature. So I also didn't want to be one of those guys. It's like, you can make a million dollars and you know, that whole nine yards <laughs> right. escape the nine to five cubicle. No, yeah. I didn't want to be that either. Okay. So Dave, tell us about promoting the book. Now um, we interviewed Jesse Cruz a couple of months ago on our podcast. He takes 
a picture of each book that he sells. He's a self published He has the book self published. Mm -hmm. So he has the books. People write to him, buy one on his web page. He signs it, writes a note to them, takes a picture of the book, and puts it on Facebook and says, "Here I am with the book that." Dave Jackson bought and then posted on Facebook, which is kind of an interesting idea of promoting and saying, look, I'm selling books, but so what are you doing to uh, promote the book? Well, first I'm going to steal Jesse's idea. That's <laughs> a <great> idea. <laughs> uh, the biggest thing I did is I reached out to my audience and I kind of had to keep them in the loop. When, when COVID came in, the book originally, I believe was going to come out in, I want to say August. And then it got pushed back to September and then it got pushed back to October. So I kept having to kind of communicate with my audience what was going on. And so when it finally came out and I was like, hey, it's actually available now. And I just, again, I, I reached out to my audience. I have a, a email list that I sent it out to and said, hey, if you have a podcast and you think I would be a good fit, I would be more than happy to come on as a guest. And again, I got lucky enough to where probably... I think, I think this is probably the eighth interview probably I've done wow. on this. Yeah. Great. And so it's just been one of those things that I've been lucky enough to have relationships with people and it's, it's humbling in a way. Cause I, it's, again, I always have that little voice in my head that goes, well, nobody's going to respond to that, <laughs> you know? And, uh, but that's been the biggest one and it is hard, uh, with COVID cause it's like, I can't, go do a book signing someplace. That's not going to work. Uh, so I'm looking into Facebook ads, but right now uh, I've just been going on podcast and uh, I have a podcast specifically for monetization with your podcast. In fact, I actually need to rebrand that now that the book is out. So right now it's just online stuff and being interviewed on other podcasts. Great. Well, once in-person events start again, I'm sure you'll be able to sell plenty of books at podcasting events. Yeah, that's... Uh, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that will be sooner than later. <laughs> yeah, aren't we all? Well, I realize that we're jumping all over the place on this podcast, but I want to go back to the writing of the book. What about editing? Did the publisher supply an editor? Yeah, they actually, uh, and that was one thing I was really impressed with is they, it just seemed like they just kept editing it and editing it. And it was, because I, I think when I did the original book, I hired two editors. I, I kind of edited it. I had, I, I ran it through all sorts of Grammarly and Microsoft Word. And then I, I handed it off to one person who edited it. And then I handed it off to a second person. So I actually had, you know, three sets of eyes because, well, really two. Your, your eyes don't count. You can't edit right, your own right. stuff. And in this case, I don't, I think I had four or five different drafts by the time it was done. I, I handed it in. They had a word count, which I can't remember what it was, but it was a lot. And then they would just send it to me and say they had, um, I forget what tool they were using, but you could see, you know, this word and you would have like a little note on the right hand side that said, did you mean this or this mm -hmm. and that? And I, I know uh, there's one section in the book that says, so you want to make a full time living. And it goes into how much money you actually have to make because you have to pay Uncle Sam. And, oh, wait a minute, you you want to take a vacation, so that means you have to charge even more and goes into that. Well, that's just a math disaster. <laughs> and the, the, poor, <laughs> the poor editor was like, wait a minute, I, I just did a calculator on this. This is not adding up. And I had to go back, and I was like, wait, what was <laughs> I thinking? So that was fun. But they caught a, a, a bunch of stuff that – just proves that you can't edit your own stuff. Mm -hmm. So that was one thing they did. They also did the the kind of the page layout, which I didn't do any of with my original book. I just, you know, I, I knew Microsoft Word. I made some headings. You know, I spaced it a certain way. I was like, ah, it's words on a page. That's all they need. Where this, mm -hmm. they have a, a, you know, it's a little prettier than a, uh, my original book, the original version of it. So that's the other thing they did. They did the cover design and... They're going to send out press releases and things of that nature as well. So they've been a, a fun company to work for. Wonderful. Great. So what about advice for uh, people who are writing a book? What kind of advice do you have for them? The thing that I realized that's a little bit like podcasting is you think when you get done and you're like, phew, got the, you know, I, <laughs> I hit my deadline and it's all done and now it's just up to the editors. That's really in the long run, kind of the easy part. The hard part is getting people to read it because you've got to go out and find your audience. And, and that's where, again, having the podcast kind of comes into play. So that's, I think, one that I think, especially when I, I did my very first book, it was a matter of, you know, you think you're done and all I have to do is put it on Amazon. And that's where I was kind of jokingly say, Amazon is like a really, really big phone book. And just being in the phone book doesn't make you famous. So it's a matter of 
what Amazon does and the different other places you can list your book, it makes it easy to purchase, but you, you still have to let the world know that's available. Right. So Dave lives near us and Matt met Dave through a meetup group. And Matt would always come home and talk about Dave Jackson, Dave Jackson, Dave Jackson says this, Dave Jackson says that. And I'm like, oh, okay, yeah. And so then we went to DC Podfest and Dave was there. And I swear, everyone knew Dave. And he was like, you know, the biggest rock star around. And it was really funny because then I'm like, oh, wow, Dave Jackson lives right around the corner. <laughs> and Matt knows him, you know, it's just really funny. So congratulations, Dave, on being so successful, not only in podcasting, but now you're an author. So congratulations and um, thank you for helping people and helping Matt Rafferty. Yeah, I think Dave even had a leather jacket on to complete the rock star oh. look at that event. Okay, there you <laughs> well, go. And now thanks to COVID, my hair's longer than it's ever been. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, just it's been interesting as I do these interviews and some of these people do an inter like they'll introduce me. And I'm kind of like sitting here in my spare bedroom going, are they talking about somebody else? You know, is that they surely can't be talking about me. So, yeah, it's uh, I, I think that's something as a podcaster, as an author, it, you know, you're it's just you and your keyboard and you're typing in words and you kind of forget that people get to read this and you actually can connect with people. And then you find out later, well, everybody knows you. And I'm like, really? Because it's just me and a microphone and a dark room here. I'm, so, uh, so don't be afraid to put your words out. And that's what we're trying to encourage people to do because you never know what opportunity will happen because of you taking that risk. I just did an interview yesterday with a guy named Matthew Dix. I mentioned his book earlier, Story Worthy. And I found out about Matthew from a podcast and bought his book and actually bought the audio book as well. And then I talked about it on my podcast. One of my students bought the book and her husband had lost his job thanks to COVID. And before he went in and did an interview, he, she handed him the book and said, you should probably read some of this before you go in to do interviews. And he did and got a job. And so it's just one of those weird, you know, this person did this, who did that, which did that. And this, you know, I mean, I met Matt at a Northeast Ohio podcasters meetup. And the next thing I know, Matt's like, Hey, do you want to come on TV? So you, <laughs> yeah. you just never know who you're going to meet and what they can do and, and the connection you can make with people. So don't hesitate to, to put it out there. I mean, the worst thing that can happen, nobody reads it and you can say, well, I've, I've now written a book and I know what that's like. Yes. That's right. right. And, and it sticks around for a long time. So yeah. Well, Dave, thank you very much for joining us today on the Author Inside You podcast. I'm positive you have influenced listeners of our show to start writing or finish writing their book. So thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me. This was great. We hope that you enjoy the Author Inside You podcast. Please consider reaching out to us and letting us know what you think about our podcast. Feedback is always welcome. And until next time. Right on. Thank you for listening to the Author Inside You podcast with your host, Leah and Matt Rafferty.